In case you guys didn't know, I have kind of sort of reorganized this room. I'm not done yet, as you can tell. There's stuff on the floor, things, blah, 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 blah. The poster's still there. But I reorganized everything, and I found out that I have more cameras than I need. Anybody could have told me that, but I really saw it. Like, I have too much cameras. Um, that box is full of cameras. Those are all cameras. Those are all cameras. Those are all cameras. Those are K-pop CDs. And, um... I don't know, I want a different shelf. I want it to go with the colorway a little bit more, like white or something, so the cameras will stick out a little bit better. But I bought this new shelf at Ikea. It's the cheap $30 one. I want two of them, but my mom stopped me from buying the second one, so I only got one. But I really, 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 really need two. Hello everybody, welcome back. It's the Dwork here. It's Thanksgiving today, and that means Black Friday is tomorrow. So, like every year, I always make a video of cameras that I recommend or don't recommend, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. I'm gonna be talking about the cameras that I don't and I do recommend for 2020 Black Friday. Lego! Alrighty, first up we got the Instax Y300, which I got four years ago, and it's a camera that I've been using religiously. It's one of my go-to cameras. I take this anywhere with me, wherever I go. Definitely one of the cameras that I recommend to you guys to get this year if you haven't gotten one already. The Instax Y300 is a wide format film camera, and that's part of the reason why I love it so much. I mean, I like the Instax mini cameras as well, but because the, the credit card size is just too small, I always lean towards this one because it's big and it captures a lot more. One of the downsides to this camera is that you can't turn the flash off, but other than that, I it takes really nice pictures regardless, so even when the flash is turned on, the picture still looks pretty good. Jack's here, he wanted to say hi. Hi, Jack. Here. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving! Happy Thanksgiving! Anyways, I thought that by buying this camera, I wouldn't be using this camera anymore. But this one actually turned out to be really hard to use. None of the pictures that I took on this camera turned out well. It only turns out well if I leave it on a tripod. The camera seems to have a little bit of a problem with focusing on things so yeah I don't use that camera anywhere near as much as I use the Fujifilm Instax Y300 so I highly recommend this one if you haven't gotten one already you need to get one this is my go-to camera love this guy you can get this camera in two colorways this colorway right here and an all-white colorway which I think is in collaboration with Urban Outfitters. I highly recommend if you are a beginner to get the Instax Mini 70. It's cheap, you can do so much things with it, and the pictures always turns out great. So I love that camera, but um, I mean if you're not really into the aesthetic, you could buy one of these Instax Mini 8, 9, 11, whatever. Um, I don't really personally recommend this model, but a lot of younger people like to get this model because it's cute. Between the Mini 8, 9, and 11, I recommend the Instax Mini 11 because I have had no problems using that camera. Given I've only used it like two or three times, but I recommend that one more so than the Instax Mini 8 or 9, just because it doesn't seem like it would break that easily and also it didn't give me any problems when I was using it. And it's relatively cheap but I don't recommend it because it breaks so easily. So I have like a couple of them right here and yeah I don't really like it. Uh, I bought this in bulk um, on eBay to fix and I fixed them but a lot of them whenever you take a picture the picture looks like this, like half of the picture is gone because the shutter is not open all the way, so they're there. But this one still works. I thought this one was broken, but I think it's just a matter of changing the battery, so I'll leave that there. So, highly, highly, highly recommend getting the Mini 70. 
If you have a little bit more money, I really recommend either the Leica, the Leica Sulfur, or the Lomo Instant Playa Jardine, which is actually just the mini version of this camera, but um, this one is actually easier to use and I like this camera so much, which was why I thought I would like this one too, but I don't like this one. I highly recommend if you have more money, to, if you want to invest in an Instax mini camera, either go for the Leica Sulfort or the Lomo Instant Auto Matte. Um, any of the versions. I have the Player Jardine version. It's a great camera. I love it. It's really easy to use. Comes with a little remote right here and that it works on and off. It doesn't work all the time, but it's there for you to use if you want. If not, this has a self timer. This one, I actually bought it broken, so I cannot tell you how great this camera is, but I mean Leica. Leica is just Leica, you know, like this one is gonna run you about $500. This one's gonna be a little over a $100. Um, this one right now on Amazon is about 80 bucks. And right now on the Lomography website, sorry, Jack is like licking his paws. Jack, can you stop? Jackie, stop. Jack, no. Anyways, this one on the Lomography website is about 150 bucks with um, lens extensions and stuff like that. Polaroid cameras, I got the Polaroid One Step Plus, Polaroid Now, and the One Step Two. This is a vintage camera. They don't make this camera anymore. <clears throat> it's an SX70 camera. And you're like, wait, I thought the SX70 camera is the one that folded. But no, this is like just the model. It uses SX70 film but it's not the one that you fold. Going on with these, I have three iType cameras. All of these are rechargeable and they all use the Polaroid film, the one that is bigger format. And you guys all know how much I love bigger format film. So that is why I love Polaroid. These are my go-to cameras, um, aside from my uh, blah, 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 blah. Instax Y300. It's also a larger format. So that's why I, I, mean, I love large format film cameras. And so I got three of these and I don't know how these are made nowadays, but I really, really recommend you guys getting the One Step Plus because there's a lot of functionalities to it. So you can do a lot of things with this camera. The only problem that I've ever encountered with this one is the film jamming. And I don't know how they're made now, but this camera is about two years old. And every time I use it, it jams and this is actually my replacement camera because my first one kept jamming but I still really recommend this guy this one still is one of my favorite cameras I'm slowly moving towards the Polaroid now just because it's so easy to use and because it has autofocus it focuses really easily on my subject um, whereas this one step plus and the one step two does not have autofocus. Um, yeah, I'm slowly liking this camera. I still really recommend this one, but I'm leaning towards using this one a little bit more nowadays. I still love my one step two. This is the OG camera. I don't use it that often anymore. I, I use my one Polaroid now a little bit more. I just like it because of the autofocus. If they stop jamming, that is a plus. So if they do that, I highly recommend getting this one. It has the app, it has so much controls, landscape mode, portrait mode, Bluetooth to connect to your phone, like did I already mention that? Moving on, I got this Polaroid Lab. I love this one because it prints my photo from my camera. It's basically a like an Instax little mini printer, except for this one is for Polaroid. I really like it. Um, it's been really easy to use. A lot of people are gonna be like, well, well, it's like a printer that's like not OG, sort of hipster type of thing. I really like this one because it's just easy to use and it has an app and a lot of my pictures turn out really good and really crisp, by the way, because I did take it from my phone, printed it on here, looks really nice and crisp. I really like it. Moving on to my 35 millimeter and 120. I have first right here is my Lomo Color Splash. Point of this camera is being able to twist this um, flash. 
so we can like twist it around like this. I use this camera in one of my videos when I went to New York and it's a fun little camera. Um, I don't use it that often, but it does take really nice photos. Next camera is the Lomos Bracket Rocket. I got this as a gift from Lomography. Lomography sent this to me to play around with and it's a really interesting camera. So like every time you take a picture and when you develop it, you get those little sprocket holes from your picture. Um, I mean, you have to send it to a developer and a processor who knows how to keep those sprockets for you because some people like to crop it out and they don't want the sprockets in there. But the point of this camera is to keep those sprockets so that it looks unique. Um, so Lomography actually develops the photos for you because they know their cameras. So you can send it to them, but it's really pricey. Um, so if you know a person who actually knows how to develop photos and keeps those little sprocket holes for you, it's really worthwhile to get this one. This is a panoramic camera, 35 millimeter film camera, and I really like it. It's kind of, sort of hard to use. There's like a little, tiny little learning curve, um, but after the learning curve, once you get a hang of it, it's really easy and fun to use. Next camera we've got right here is the Lomo Fish Eye. This one's a really fun camera. I thought I wouldn't really like it that much, but I actually really recommend it. It gives your your photo an overall like a wider point of view. Um, you get that little circular effect on the corners and stuff like that. It's it's a fun camera. I like it. It's really light and easy to use. Okay, so this one on top right here, this is the Holga GCFN. I have it in the multicolor colorway. They have a different colorway, but I think this colorway specifically is the glass model. They have the other colorway where it's pink and green and stuff, but I don't think that one's glass. So I have this one and I don't they don't make it anymore, but if you have if you are able to and if you are lucky enough, highly, highly, highly recommend the Holga GCFN as opposed to the Holga 120S because the 120S uses a plastic lens and the GCFN uses a glass lens. And I mean I love this camera. It's so fun to use and the format is huge it's a 120 film you only get like 12 photos per roll but uh it's a fun little toy camera i know people were telling me like why are you using your um kodak what is it kodak ektar 100 and people are going crazy but honestly it's such a great camera i don't know i really recommend buying it if you are able to i think they still sell on aliexpress um or if you're lucky, go buy one on eBay. The last one, this is my most favorite Lomography film camera. Not just because there's a picture of Jungkook on it, but also because it's a really cute camera. Like, guys, look at it. And not just that, it takes fantastic, fantastic, fantastic photos. I love the pictures coming out from this camera. They all look so beautiful. So, highly, highly, highly recommend the Lomo Lesardina. Um, I have the DIY version, which you can paint, color, whatever. I just stuck some stickers on it, but it looks cute the way it is. I love that camera. It's a fantastic camera that takes really nice photos. And the flash is so extra, but I mean, it really ties in with the camera and everything. So love that camera. Highly recommend if you want a camera that's 35 millimeters, get that one. So fun and easy to use. Whew, moving on, we got these cameras. I had to take them off because they were like kind of sitting on the shelf like this. But let me put it back on for you guys to see. So right here, we got all of my Instax square film cameras. Now, to be clear, these are the smaller format film cameras. Smaller than Polaroid. It's square like Polaroid, but it's smaller. So. Don't be confused and buy Fujifilm SQ film and then put it into your Polaroid because it will not work. So first camera I got right here is the SQ10. I'm not a big fan of digital film cameras, but because this is a recommenda recommendation video, I need to tell you guys which one I prefer between these two. And not gonna lie, I like the SQ10 a little bit more than the SQ20. Yeah, crazy, right? 
The SQ20 is a newer version of the SQ10 that was released back in 2018. Yeah, but I don't like it that much. The SQ10 is really all you need. I love this camera. One thing is because it's the build is so sturdy. It's just, it feels good in the hands and um, this is metal, whereas this is plastic. I don't know. This one looks cute and all, but I just like the SQ10 a little bit more. The main difference between these two cameras is this one shoots video. Yeah, video on a film camera. It shoots like five second videos. You can put micro SD cards on either of these and you can keep the pictures digitally on your computer or uh, videos. The videos are kind of blurry. I feel like I'm watching like an old 90s video when I look back at the photo or the video from this camera. Um, doesn't really make a difference for me. I don't really care for the video part. That is why I like this one a little bit more and also because the lens is a little bit wider. This is a 28.5 millimeter lens as opposed so this one, this is a 33.4 millimeter lens. They're both f2.4, so um, a lot of the stuff is gonna be in focus. So you don't really get that bokeh type of effect. Okay, moving on to the analog SQ models. I have the SQ6 and the SQ1, which was released this year, and not gonna lie, not my favorite. If you guys watched that video that I talked about the SQ1, you guys all know I was kind of disappointed in this one, uh, but it is called SQ1 and this is called SQ6. So this one should be less advanced and this should be more advanced, but that's not the problem. The problem is this one is like almost double the price of the SQ6. And so I was just really confused because this is like $130 and this one on Amazon right now is like 80 bucks. So I don't know. If you're willing to yeah, buy like a newer, I don't know. People were telling me, well, I don't want that many functions on my camera, so I'd, I'd much rather buy the SQ1. That's true, you could do that, but this is a little bit pricier and you're paying for less functionalities and stuff. So the SQ6 is the one that, that I do recommend a lot. Um, I love this camera, I use it a lot. Um, See my, my battery compartment thing. I lost that one, so I don't really know what that is. But so when I put batteries in here, I'm just gonna have to tape it up. It has so many functionalities. It has auto mode, selfie mode, macro mode, landscape mode, double exposure, light, dark. There's a self timer and also a flash on off button, which I mean, I cannot emphasize how important that is because sometimes like you take a picture and you turn on the flash thinking that you need the flash and your picture just turns out 10 times worse because of the flash. Um, so I don't, that's why I recommend getting this one because you can turn off flash, which I think is really important. All of these functions are nice too, but um, flash and self timer and also a tripod mount on the bottom is what's the selling point for me. Uh, and yeah, it's a great camera. I love it. Um, this camera, as you guys can see, doesn't have any functions. It's just a plain camera. Um, yeah. So those are the cameras that I have. Um, other thing that I want to recommend you guys is tripods. Okay. Love, love, love tripods. Um, I love this Manfrotto Pixie tripod. If you are able to, I highly recommend getting the Manfrotto Evo 2. Um, that one lets you extend the leg out a little bit more. It looks exactly like this, except you can extend the leg out a little bit more. So if that is, if that is on sale on Black Friday, I highly recommend getting that as opposed to this one. Although I have two of these and they all work very well. This is Manfrotto Pocket MP3-BK. So what this is, is exactly what you guys see. So this is the tripod. It's just a very low tripod, which you may think like, why would I need such a low tripod? You do. Like for me personally, whenever I vlog, I like to get angle shots, angle, angles that are kind of like weird, like like kind of lower or 
I don't know. This one's just nice. So whenever I like eat something or whatever, people can actually see my face as opposed to the camera like pointing down like this. So I really like this tripod. I recently got it two months ago and I've been using it a lot and I really, 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 really like it. Oh, man, I'm losing my breath. I'm hungry. I'm ready to eat Thanksgiving dinner right now. It's like three something. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Those are the stuff that I recommend and if you guys are able to get any of these stuff for Black Friday, go get it and have a happy Thanksgiving. Be safe, wear your mask, keep your group small. I mean, it's already Thanksgiving. You guys are probably out and about eating. So anyways, be safe and I will see you guys next time. Adios.